scoot up for a second and let's talk. Yo, DJ, roll that beautiful champagne footage. Welcome to Champagne Secrets, where the bubbles are crisp, the secrets are smoother than silk, and the gossip flows like the finest champagne. Big up yourself, Empress. Glasses up to the streets that never sleep and to the secrets running deep. Let's get it. Champagne Secrets. Confidants, welcome to the chalet located in Champagne City, baby. Come join me, the Empress, for some grown discussions and bubbly banter. Over here, we get classy with a twist, huh? A little clink with chaos with a side of charm. So if you're ready to sip, savor, and spill, then come on in and if you're one of my non-alcoholic confidants grab you a non-alcoholic bubbly and get in here <laughs> so for today i am sipping on my moet and chandon imperial rosé you already know you see it on the screen it is my favorite and at this point i think i need to be monetized or sponsored by moet <laughs> Um, but over here we give bubbly commentary. So come on in, scoot on up, grab your glass, and get ready to get into it. It is time for our positivity and affirmations. So take those glasses and raise them high. You are a rare champagne, bubbling with endless potential and effervescence. When life shakes you up, don't let the fears fade. Repeat after me. I am resilient. I am unstoppable. I am a force of nature. Remember, every setback is just a setup for a glamorous comeback. So keep sparkling, keep pushing, because your success story is still being written. So cheers to you, confidants, for you are worth it. So the show Transforming Roly actually premiered on this past Sunday, and let's get into this recap. So this show begins with Roly giving a recap of her history on the Zeus Network. And for those who really don't know, she began on this show with Chance and it was called One More Chance. It was a dating love type show that he never truly found love on, you know, much like Flavor did on Flavor of Love. Um, and she went on there for two seasons. She was one of those big girls on the show. So when she says that she's the queen of this ish, it's because she's been around the longest. And I believe she's been on the most shows and seasons on Zeus of all of the girls who have been on the Zeus network. But she lets everybody know that Chance gave her the name. Roly Poly Snack Meals was the original name before she dropped the Poly Snack Meals and just started going by Roly. But she stated that she knew it was a jab at her weight, but she embraced it in her words as the big confident woman that she is. Press pause. Confidence doesn't need enhancement because confidence is confidence. So she wasn't confident. She was comfortable with her weight. And there's a difference. She was content with it until she could change it. But you see, that's why you see a lot of big girls run to fix their body first when they get money. Because they're not as confident as they say that they are in their body. They're just content. Y'all remember that old prayer that we used to say and our parents and grandparents used to tell us to quote, God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Well, that's where Roly was on One More Chance. I can't change it, so I'm just going to embrace it. I'm going to own it, right? I know people are going to talk about me and drag me anyway, so why not just own who I am and not be affected by it? So... I'm going to become the big bad itch to mask my insecurity and it can't affect me. Then it goes on to say the courage to change the things I can, right? And that's where she was after the baddies when she got a little money because then she could change things. She wasn't confident about whether or not it was good for her because as she states later on in the show, I'm going to do what I want to do. And this is the way I want to do it. The problem is she lacked the wisdom to know the difference because what you can do and what you should do right now are two totally different things. All things are lawful to us, right? But not all things are expedient. And that means that just because you can do it, it doesn't mean that you should. Just because you can do it doesn't mean it's going to be beneficial for you in the long run. But again, 
This is the world that wants quick fixes. And that's how we got right here. And I know we drag Roly a lot, but Roly is actually a pretty girl. It's the eyes for me. <laughs> and when she first came on the scene, it was her confidence for me. Because baby, I could never. <laughs> I mean, I'm not a big girl. I'm not really big. I'm like in between because I'm tall. So I'm in between what you would call being big and small. So I'm too plus size to be considered small, but I'm too small to be considered plus size. Does anybody else have that struggle <laughs> here? So with me, I could never, I could never. I have a little pouch and I have a little celly in my thighs and it keeps me from wearing a lot of things because I was so insecure. When I get my loyal followers and subscribers and all of that, I'll do a video on how I overcame a lot of my body insecurities and I didn't even have surgery. But by the way, did y'all like and subscribe to the video? If you could do me a favor right now, Press pause, like, and subscribe, help my channel blow up. To all of those new subscribers, I want to say thank you because it's you that caused me to be able to do what I do now. It's all for you. You guys are amazing. And that's why I spend time in the beginning of my videos, making sure that you guys are affirmed and have some positivity poured into your life. But for real, like, and subscribe for me <laughs> and consider supporting the channel and hit the cash app. Um, but for real, I hate it. And I know I could tighten it up if I really get committed to exercising, but that's my problem. That's my problem. But surgery ain't it. <laughs> I can tell y'all that now. Surgery will not be the final answer. All I needed to see is one person pass away from trying to attain this facade of beauty. And it was a no for me. It's one thing to put myself in jeopardy by something I need to have done, but for something that I really don't, nah, it, it's a hard pass. <laughs> but they show her baby picture. And how many of y'all have had these ponytails or pigtails as we used to call them? And her baby picture is so cute. Her little girl picture, should I say? Because I know I had these pigtails in my hair. She was such a cute little girl, but she says that she didn't have anyone. She said her dad wasn't there and her mom was too busy, you know, running around with her ninjas and trying to catch the next fish on the line. And it really let me know a lot about her. It really made a lot of sense as to a lot of things and a lot of behaviors that we've seen exhibited from Roly, especially the one about her being kind of man hungry and being thirsty for a man. Because if that's all your mom exhibited in front of you, then it's not shocking that that's something that you would lean towards in your adulthood. So she goes on to that and she basically says that her mom wasn't there. Um, so basically she had to raise herself and groom herself, if that's true. And if you have a child with no boundaries who has to figure it out by any means necessary, these are the kind of things that you end up in. Because you saw her mother spending more time chasing men. Now you have her doing what? Chasing men. No boundaries. No structure. A child left to figure it out on their own. She was modeled after, or should I say she modeled herself after what she saw. And you'll know what I mean in a second. Because she's going to make a statement and I'm going to point it out to you. But she said that she's always been alone because her sisters had their fathers. And I'm going to do a totally different video about that because a lot of children deal with this and are dealing with this today. And we wonder why everyone seems lost right now. She also said when she's not filming that she feels alone and she struggles with depression and she attributes her ability to go on to God and her son. Y'all listen, God has something called his divine will right and his permissive will a lot of times god has a plan for us most of the times all the time god has a divine plan for us his divine will but when we choose to detour and do things in our own way what happens is we end up in his permissive will so when we say god is keeping me going sometimes god is just granting us our wish it's not him keeping us going. It's him saying, this is what you want. Okay, go ahead. This is what you want to do. Okay, go ahead. So we sit back and we say things like God did it. And God is sitting back looking at us like, nah, that's all you, baby. <laughs> I have nothing to do with that one. I gave you the desires of your heart. 
You didn't give me the desires of mine. I mean, if we're going to talk about it, then let's talk. Split up. I told y'all there's wisdom to be gained from every situation. Every situation will teach you one of two things. What to do and what not to do. And this is a channel where we have fun, but we also gain wisdom while doing it. I mean, anything less would be uncivilized. <laughs> so not everything that we do is attributed to God keeping us. Sometimes it's our choices that are keeping us. It would be insane to give up after you put yourself through all of this. So you're pushing yourself to continue, not God. Because you can't convince me that my God told her to get filet mignon on the table for beauty. Because the same God says that you were fearfully and wonderfully made. So then she says, when you have confidence in yourself, you can build up your dreams no matter what you go through. And here's my problem with that, right? Some of us aren't by any means necessary type people. We just ain't. Listen, I'm a personal vision coach, right? I help people overcome limiting beliefs by um, helping them create the best version of themselves possible. And in order to overcome those limiting beliefs and the depression that we tend to go through, you have to change your focus. So I help people to refocus. So in trying to get clients and learning how to market, I have people say things like, hike up, hike up your price. If people can't afford it, then you're not for them. And you want high payers. And my response to them is always, well, what happens to the people who are like me? who needed a lifeline and didn't have any resources to get it. I can't just leave them on the wayside because I want to get rich quick. If I didn't mind stepping over people and was just money hungry, then I would have just jumped on it and ran with it. But because I have a heart and because my calling is to people and to see people genuinely smile again and have a sense of direction for their lives. And because I know that there are people out there who just need a lifeline, I can't just think money. The bank robber had confidence in themselves when they tried to rob the bank to build their dreams. People on live their family for insurance money to quote unquote live a dream. And she rode around in Alfredo sauce and let Chance ride her back like a horse to fulfill her dreams. That wasn't God. So when she says, no matter what you go through, I have a problem because how you arrive at the dream is just as important as the dream itself, especially when you have children. Zeus and Now That's TV were the only ones that were really allowing everyday people the opportunity to get on. But look at what they had to go through in order to get that dream to begin coming to pass. You have to embarrass yourself. You got to make yourself look dumb. And in this position right here, you got to go through being filet mignon for a sense of beauty because the people on the internet told you you were too big. So now you want to fix it. We got to start by fixing ourselves on the inside before we start touching our bodies on the outside. But then she says, she knows everyone is saying, why not go to the gym? But we can all shut the hell up because like everything else, she doing it her way. That statement right there should be right up there with what's the worst that can happen. It should. That statement right there should be right up there with what's the worst that can happen because of the... There's so many people that wish they could take it back. There's so many people who have made that statement that wish they would have listened to sound wisdom and sound advice and sound doctrine, but they didn't. And they're wishing that they could have took it back and listened when they, when they were told not to do it. But this is the show me generation. This is the generation that don't believe fat meat is crazy. <laughs> this is the generation that doesn't believe anything until it happens to them. So I can completely understand why she made that statement because everybody thinks that they're different until they're not. <laughs> but then she goes on to say, I'm still rolling. And to be honest with you, I think that should have been the name of the show. I'm still rolling, doing it my way. <laughs> because that's what she did she said to hell with the crunch a squat a plank a treadmill just give me filet mignon number three special honey <laughs> so this episode she gets the bbl and liposuction so she only gets that and really to have plenty of surgeries but this is the only one that she gets on this episode so basically we're watching surgery number one 
And um, I watched it because I want to see how it's done. I used to want a BBL, used to. Um, thank you, Roly, because even if I thought that I wanted one up until this point, you have given me every reason in the book not to ever have that thought again. <laughs> but she takes her booking manager with her and she's going to get this procedure done and she says that she's nervous. And to be honest, the booking manager looks more nervous than she does. <laughs> and I would have too, cause child, I would have got in that car like, so we finna walk the green mile, huh? Cause what? But they ride to the doctor's office. And yes, I said doctor's office because the room that she was in looked like a doctor's exam office. I can't make this stuff up. And press pause, let's go back because while she was in the car, she said that in six months, she's thinking about getting a tummy tuck. So that would be surgery number two that she's discussing right now. But she says that she has to decide whether or not she wants a child first. Now, if you're having baby fever, why would you get a BBL and lipo? Please help me understand, make it make sense. Even if you don't get the tummy tuck, why go through all of that just to be stretched out by a pregnancy? I but she says, hide your man, hide your husband, because she's still in ninjas all summer. Y'all remember when I said above that she's following in her mother's model? She's following her mother's footsteps? This is why. Because you didn't do this for you. No. You did this so you could be accepted. And you don't care who you're accepted by as long as you're accepted. She didn't say, I'm gonna find my man. She said, I'm gonna find yours. And you have a son. How do you think your 13 year old son feels about seeing his mom on display for the world? And on display saying that I don't want my own man, I want yours. Roly says she ready to shoot, shoot, shoot. But how does her son feel about this? And I'm not gonna show her son because a child shouldn't have to be attached to this. There's no way I would have my child on a show where all my goods are hanging on display and where I'm being poked, prodded, injected, and flipped like a roasted pig. There is no way I would have my son, my child on this show, no way. But now they're in the doctor's office and she meets with the doctor and y'all look at this room. Look, wires hanging from under the monitor. Looks like it's a security monitor. So are we in a security room? Then it looks like you can see cups and stuff behind them. So I'm wondering if this is the security room slash cafeteria, but I guess now slash consultation room because this is the first time she's meeting the doctor. The desk looks like something you can order off Amazon or Timu. Nothing about this consultation room looks comforting or soothing for someone who is about to go undergo something as major as this, because y'all do know that this surgery is extremely dangerous, which is why a lot of plastic surgeons will not do it. They won't. But then she asked them, when can she come back to get her back done? So she's here now to get the BBL and the life off. She's talked about getting a tummy tuck. That's another surgery. So now she's talking about another surgery and that's getting her back done. So right now we're talking about three different surgeries already. The doctor tells her in about two to three months. So I don't know if she's going to get her back done at the same time as her tummy tuck or if she'll do one and then the other. But my body is in pain for her just thinking about it because there's no way. Now, this is where I would have canceled everything right watch this clip even though it is a surgical procedure this is not a surgery nobody's gonna cut and open up a stitch nothing gonna be happening like that gonna child sir you don't even know what you're about to do to me it's not a surgery sir are you serious he said it's not a surgery because she's not being opened up and no stitches i had my gallbladder removed through laparoscopy if i'm pronouncing it wrong forgive me but i cannot pronounce that word but that's where they go in through my belly button and use lasers to remove the gallbladder. I wasn't opened up, but it was still a surgery. You're having fat sucked from one spot through a needle that looks like a baby katana slim being prodded through different areas of your stomach and then placed in another part of your body through several different entry marks. And you wanna tell me that it's not a, well, 
with. Considering it was done in a doctor's office and not a sterile environment in a hospital, I can get why you don't want to admit that it's a surgery. I can get it. But now I can't show a whole lot <laughs> because from here on out, baby, all clothes are off except for her bikini underwear and then those come off. But the breast, the butt, everything is out. But I'm going to show you pictures that keeps her as covered as possible but she gets marks for where the fat will be removed and where it will be added she's told that after the surgery there's going to be no sitting on her butt for six weeks but she will have to continue to eat to feed the fat in her butt so on top of everything else now her ass got its own set of instructions that must be followed so she's all marked up now and it's time to go in the surgery room which is just another examination room yeah because i can't keep calling this a surgery room i can't so i'm gonna call it a makeover room <laughs> because nothing in here looks sterile nothing in here looks like it's prepared for a surgery nothing at all nothing at all would y'all do this drop in the comments and let me know because y'all look at this room <laughs> look at it this room looks like the room that you wait in after being checked into the er look Look at the massage table <laughs> that they have her laying on. I mean, can she get one more? Because half of her is gonna be hanging off of this thing. Like, what are we doing? You have items that are supposed to remain sterile, just laying out on the table. The door is sitting wide open, just wide open for any viruses or bacteria to get in. Get on the tools that you have to use to poke and prod me with. Neither of the ladies have gloves on. It, everything just wide open then you have windows sitting over here and that means potential leaks from the outside coming in through weak seals in the window Come, baby ain't no way i would have turned around and said abort mission because for real so then they finally put on some gloves y'all after they're already in the room they haven't scrubbed their hands down first nothing just throw on gloves because that's all the protection you need right <laughs> child they spray her with some betadine to avoid to avoid infection so that's all the protection that she has prior to this makeover some spray a not so sterile room not sterilized hands but some spray so they spray down her butt and they give her some tiny shots to numb the skin where the baby katanas are going to be inserted because they have to insert the katana slim in first um, to numb her insides prior to the Kill Bill special being inserted to suck the fat out. Y'all look at the size of this thing. Baby, ain't no way. None. Out none none y'all i can't even handle blood being drawn from my veins because they're so tiny and i have to be poked and prodded with a butterfly needle just for them to find my my veins so there's no way you inserting that in, that thing into me and and i'm not sleep child. why is she not sleep somebody please okay if i have any confidants who have had a bbl done please tell me is it normal procedure for you to stay awake through this or do they put you to sleep because why this baby ain't sleep through this? And look at the size of this thing. Do y'all want to be beautiful this bad? Drop in the comments and let me know if you would subject your body to this just for, uh, uh, just to have a bad itch body, as they say. Would you subject your to, to this thing right here? Baby, no. Look how far this thing is in her. Child, I felt so bad watching this. And it gets worse because they insert it into each of the little areas that were numb by the small needle. Y'all telling me this isn't a Katana Slim? Look at it. Door, look, door wide open. People standing there watching, no privacy. So anybody can just walk past the janitor, anybody. Then they turn her over so they can do the front and they do the same thing. They spray her stomach. They do the little injections to numb her skin. And again, here comes the baby Katana one of her sides is more sensitive than the other so she's screaming out and saying that it hurts i mean i bet i bet it, it it's almost like i'm watching a slasher film and she's being slashed by so many needles and wand like i feel like i'm watching saw 12 or something because this is insane they let her sit 
to give the medicine the opportunity to work. And then the doctor comes in and lets her know that this is not a major surgery. Sir, anytime anything you do can cause irreparable damage, including death, it is major. And the fact that he keeps saying it is not as a doctor really concerns me. Because anytime you stick something inside of me and pull something out, then I have been surgerized. I don't care what you say. You can't make a patient comfortable by omitting the truth. And come to think about it, I never heard him tell her what could go wrong with the surgery. The risk to getting it. The fact that you could hit a nerve or accidentally inject fat into a blood vessel, which can be deadly. I don't recall him telling her any of that. That's like giving me medicine for depression, but not telling me the side effect is suicidal thoughts. Huh? Be for real. So, this is the tool <laughs> that she's using in order to remove fat from her stomach and inject it into her buttocks. And I call this the Kill Bill special because look at this thing. And to make it even worse, she touching all on the end of the tool with the door wide open. So drafts and everything are coming in. But how are you touching the end of a tool that shouldn't be touched until it's inserted into my skin? Please help me understand. Help me understand. How is any of this okay? And they allowed this to be filmed, which makes it even worse. Because that lets me know that you think what you're doing is okay. That's the, look at it. She's just shaking it in the air while she's talking. I didn't see it get cleaned. I didn't see it get sterilized. Nothing. She didn't pull the tip of it out of a sealed bag. You know how they do in the hospital when they're pulling a needle out because they're getting ready to inject you or draw blood and they make sure that they're using a sterile needle. Hell, even when you go to a tattoo shop, they pull a sterile needle out in order to do your tattoo hell i have a dermal piercing i have my nose pierced i also have my septum pierced i got all three of them done on the same day they used separate tools for each one and made sure each one came out of a sterile pack are y'all serious so she inserts it into rolling door wide open this girl in the corner is adjusting her gloves. I'm surprised Roly didn't get all sorts of infections from this. I really am. And um, so they show the fat that's draining from her. And it's a lot. The girl says it's about two liters in just the first go round alone. She changes the container out for a new one. And the doctor continues with the fat removal. Look. This doctor is prodding and probing and jabbing. I feel like this is assault <laughs> because no ma'am, I feel like this should be an assault charge. There's no way in nobody's world would I. I'll take Jim for 300 Alex. Don't pass, go, don't collect $200. Ma'am, no, there isn't no way in hell <laughs> I will put myself through this, no way. And this is the sterilization tool that they use. Just spray. Once they were finished sucking the fat out, all she did was spray the betadine on the tool that she used and set it on the uncovered tray. Y'all, we can't make this stuff up. We can't. Right in the open. So now it's time for her to flip over. And she's going to get the fat injected into her butt. And Roly says that she needs a man to help her. Child, this girl said, child, bye. Ain't nobody got time for that. She grabbed Roly's head and snatched her up real quick. <laughs> and they tell her not to tense up because she will squirt the fat back out. Ma'am, what? <laughs> this is just way too much. I cannot believe this is what y'all put yourself through. And the fact that people go back over and over and over again to get it bigger and bigger. So you, I, I don't understand. Y'all got to make it make sense because there's no way. The doctor um, makes tunnels in her butt for where the Kill Bill special is going to be injected. Because I guess there has to be road rays in her ass that the needle will follow once inserted in order to fill it with that. So now she has to have I-10s built in her ass so the needle will have clear road to travel through. 
Now, mind you, this is the same tool that she used to suck the fat from her stomach that she just sprayed down with the betadine and sat down in the open. And now she's using it again to reinsert into her to put the fat into her butt. So this is the same tool used for everybody. Do y'all have multiple of these machines? Even, yeah. And the door is still open. Y'all can tell this door being open is really stressing me out. So Roly is trying to hold her composure because she's saying it hurts so bad. So clearly the numbing medicine ain't fully numbing because she's screaming this ish hurts. And it looks like it hurts. She's being prodded with this thing about 50 11 times. And now I understand where all the post-op pain comes from. All the ITNs that have to be run through your body in order to remove fat. And then the new roadways that have to be created in order to inject the fat. Y'all are crazy as hell for getting this done. It's these katanas and Hattori Hanzo sword marks, caves, and caverns that you're recovering from. So they show her the results on a phone once they're done. Yeah, a phone. Not a screen in front of her that she can look up at, but a phone. So she's patched up from her war wounds and she takes a call from Natalie. Her booking manager just walks into the room because remember, the door was never closed, just wide open, hands her the phone and she's telling Natalie that her ass is fat. To me, her butt doesn't really look any different except for maybe the bulge right at the top portion of her butt. Um, it wasn't a major, tr uh, a major change to the way it looked to me. Hence, why we saw her get another one after Baddies was aired. I think she had three BBLs total. But maybe it's because she's still so big and it's really hard to see the difference. But to me, I really don't see a difference. But she leaves out of the procedure with a diaper and a t-shirt. And she gets into the back of her truck after they make them lay the seats down because she can't sit on her ass for like six weeks. So she has to lay on her stomach. But I wonder what the point of the diaper is right like is it to catch the excess drainage or is it because she's numb she could have an accident or is this how she has to go to the bathroom like what is the whole point of the diaper so that's about it for this episode but she starts looking at the comments from her videos and she says that she hates judgmental ass bitches and we have to stop this we have to we have to stop thinking that everybody is being judgmental instead of being concerned or telling you that there's a better and safer way to do it that's not being judgmental but that's this new world that we live in that everybody thinks that sound advice is judging and to think that she turned around and did this again and again and there's no way that this is good for your body you can't after what i saw there is no way this is good for your body not on the inside all your organs there's no way that this is good I, I don't understand how this is regulated like i don't I, I don't understand how this is really regulated because it cannot be okay for a person's body to have to go through this it it, it just can't it, like two plus two does not equal four to me in this equation and it definitely doesn't equal four for the individuals that go and have it done it just doesn't to me it just doesn't seem safe and it doesn't seem worth it but all Rolly cares about is whose man she's taking in, in Miami honey so she's basically letting us know that this has more to do with her being aesthetically pleasing to men than about her health she didn't say I'm glad I got a lot of this weight off so that I can spend more time with my son or do more with my son she said I got this weight off so that I can be Mrs. Take Me Man all I can say is this, because she's already had the surgeries done, so <laughs> ain't no taking them back. But all I would say to Roly is this, don't spend so much time trying to chase a man or chase a look that you do to your son the very thing that your mother did to you, Roly. That's all I have for this one. Oh, might I add this, there's some new things coming down for the channel for my confidants. So please consider hitting that like, like button and hitting the subscribe and becoming a confidant yourself so you'll be notified when the new things drop. Um, we have a new section that's coming to the channel that I'm working on now. 
and it is called Night Secrets. Yes, <laughs> this space is specifically for those who like a little something extra as they go to sleep at night. So it's going to be full of positivity, story times, visualization and breathwork practices. For those of you who like the sounds of rain and fire and thunderstorms for your nighttime indulgence, we'll have some of that. We're also going to have a section that we call Mornings with the Empress, where I teach you how to wake up and shake that tiredness from your body and learn how to command your morning. So we have so many new things that are coming down the pipeline for the channel, and you don't want to miss out because where else can you go and get your clean chaos and a whole bunch of empowerment except at Champagne Secrets? <laughs> so please consider hitting that like button, hitting that subscribe button, and becoming a confidant yourself. Also consider supporting the channel. Right now, all proceeds are going to assist my daughter who recently lost my grandbaby. And I did do a video about that in case any of you want to check it out. She was seven months pregnant um, when she went to the doctor and found out that her baby didn't have a heartbeat. And I had to watch her go through the whole process of giving birth to her baby not knowing well knowing that the baby wouldn't be breathing so i did a video to explain my experience um so consider checking that out and support the channel everything that you do over here is appreciated and everyone is welcome no matter who the who you are but this is a safe place we don't do drama we don't do negativity we don't do um abuse we don't abuse each other we communicate we learn we grow and we share wisdom together so thank you for being a part. Confidence. Always remember, if it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink. Till we meet again. Ta-ta.